All right, let's get crack a in here down to example number cinco. Okay, so uh, what I have uh, uh, typed out right here are all the rules of exponents, and we're going to be using a lot of them right now. So maybe it may be a good idea to go ahead and pause it right now and, and write down all of these rules for rational exponents. And a lot of these you've seen before, um, but uh, we're going to be using a lot, um, uh, plenty of them right now. And just wanted to list them out there for you before we get cracking down here. Okay, and I'll just quickly go through them, but then uh, we're going to apply them. Okay, so if I multiply a, a common variable, and they, and they both happen to have uh, different exponents, and so that's why both the a's are the same, so that's what we call the base, but yet the exponents are, are different, we can actually simplify that to make it one term. So what you do is that you keep the a, and you add the exponents r and s. Okay, if I have a to the negative r, We've talked about that, uh, where you just uh, do the reciprocal of a one over one over a, and then now our exponent r becomes positive. When we divide the same uh, variable, but yet they have different exponents, as long as they have the same variable, you can do this cool trick, uh, which is you keep the a and you raise that to the power of r minus s. Okay, uh, and check this out right here. This one's a little uh, trickery if you just look at it and you're like, oh, okay, that's kind of weird. Okay, so if you have a, a fraction as your base, meaning that you're going to be raising in a power that's negative, but the fraction is a base, okay, you're going to flip the base. Okay, we're going to flip it, so A over B is going to become B over A. You see why we're doing that? We only flip the base, okay, listen now, we only flip this base, okay, when we have a negative exponent, okay? So uh, something to model that, say if I had uh, 2 thirds to the power of uh, negative 3. Okay, so before I even deal with that negative 3, I'm actually going to do this. I'm going to make this a positive exponent, okay, by doing this, by doing 3 halves and then now raising that to a positive 3. So notice that my first line or my first step is I flip, I, uh, flip the base. It went from two thirds to three halves, and notice it went from a negative exponent to a positive exponent. And now I can go ahead and, and distribute three to the power of three, three to the power of three on top, and then two to the power of three on the bottom. Okay, so that's why it's b to the power of r, and then and then um, a to the power of r, just as I showed right there. Okay, so a little bit uh, tricky there when you have a negative exponent and it's a fraction as your base there. And we'll be doing that later on in this problem. If I have a single variable r and then r a, and I raise that to the power of r, and I raise that all to the power of s, we uh, keep our a, but yet we're multiplying r and s. And uh, this guy right here, if I have a b as my base, I raise that to the power of r, I multiply, actually I raise a to the power of r and b to the power of r. Basically everything inside the parentheses gets raised to the power of r. And uh, right here, if I have a over b raised to the power of r, everything gets raised to the power of r. So a to the r, b to the r. And last but not least, if I have a to the power of negative r, uh, and, and the way of writing this is you can say 1 over a to the r. I mean, they put right here 1 over a quantity r, but 1 to, one to the r is just 1, and then a to the r is just going to be a to the r right here. Okay. A lot of variables, you're probably like, hey, I thought there were supposed to be numbers in math. <laughs> yeah, sometimes they kind of disappear, right? And then all I have is variables. But uh, let's go ahead and do a few of these examples, and we're going to be referring back to, to these guys uh, plenty of times here, okay? Okay, so uh, this is just using um, our first rule right here, right? So if I have a common base 3, what do I do with 1 half and uh, 1 third? Well, I'm going to add them, right? So I'm going to do 1 half plus 1 third. Okay, so you got to get a common denominator, right? And uh, my common denominator of 2 and 3 is 6. I'm going to multiply this side by 2, top and bottom by 2, and multiply this top and bottom by 3. So 3 plus 2 is 5 on top, and then we have a common denominator of 6. So the directions say right with only positive exponents. 5 and 6 are positive. We is done. And that's it. All right, come over here now. So now this is just applying uh, this guy right here. 7 and 7, they both have the same base, so that means we keep our base. 
And what do we do with two thirds and four thirds? Well, uh, well, look, I mean, we're just gonna subtract, right? So we're gonna do two thirds minus four thirds. Okay. Um, let's see. Uh, two thirds minus four thirds. That's gonna give us a negative two thirds, right? Two minus four is a negative two. Uh, now we have to apply. Uh, let's see this rule when right here when you have a negative exponent, right? We have to flip. Uh, or uh, basically take the reciprocal of a so take the reciprocal of, of 7 So it's going to be 1 over 7 and then you raise that to the power of whatever our negative exponent was But now it's going to be a positive exponent. So it's going to be raised that to the power of 2 thirds Okay, now we're not going to rewrite that as a radical because that's not what the directions say We're only going to leave them as positive exponents All righty then going on with the C and D ah! Those are long and hairy. It's okay, guys. We got this. All right. So uh, let's check out uh, this first guy right here. Okay. Now, when we have problems like this where we have, you know, variables on top, variables on the bottom, big old parentheses, quantity, and then to power something, uh, I always suggest that maybe we try to simplify maybe what's inside the parentheses. You could do that first. Okay, like, you know, pretty much like right here. See how these are both B? You know, you can go ahead and simplify that first. Or you can go ahead and distribute the 6. So there's two approaches here, okay? You could either simplify what's inside the parentheses first, or you can go ahead and distribute the 6. Um, both answers are going to be correct if you've done everything um, that's mathematically right. So I guess it's just going to be up to us what we want to do here. So I guess on, on this one, I'm just going to show you what happens if I were to raise everything to the power of 6 here, okay? So if I raise a to the one third to the power of 6, well, that's the rule. Check this out right here. Check it, check it. That's this rule, right? If I have a to the power of something, quantity to, to the power of another thing right there, we're going to multiply r and s. So in the same way, we're going to do, we're going to multiply one third times 6. So we're going to have a to the 6 over 3 because I did 1 third times 6 and then to the same thing with the B right there B to the 6 times 2 so that's 12 over 3 and then do the same thing for the denominator B to the power of just 6 because we could think of this as like a ghostly 1 right here 1 times 6 okay so simplifying this I get A to the 2 and this right here just becomes B to the 4th and this down here becomes it's still b to the uh, 6. So now we have to apply our rule when we are dividing common variables. We have to subtract the exponents, right? So this is going to become a squared. Now check this out. Check this. Don't miss this, y'all. Don't miss this. 4 minus 6 is b to the power of negative 2, right? right, right. 4 minus 6 is negative 2. Ah, ah, but what do we do when it's a negative exponent? We got to write like this, right? So we have to do 1 over, or in other words, since it's in the top or the numerator, we write this as a positive exponent by putting this in the denominator. So watch this. We leave the a squared on top because that's not that doesn't have a negative exponent, but then we move the b t to the negative 2, to the denominator, but now it becomes a positive. Well, bam. Okay, so notice again we leave the a squared on top because this does not have a negative two as an exponent. But since this has a negative exponent, we're going to move that to the denominator. So a little bit tricky right there. And going on to here now. Oh, dang, we got fractions and negative ones. Dude, but we got this. Okay, so what I suggest is this for this one now. So, in this problem, I first I raised everything to the power of 6. In this one, what I want to do is let's actually simplify what's inside the parentheses first, and then we'll raise everything to our power here. Okay, let's just come back up here to our rules. Remember how we talked about if we have a negative r as our exponent and, a, and our base is a fraction, we can flip the, flip the a and the b, right? So, so I'm actually going to do that right now. I'm going to go ahead and flip 
I'm going to flip what's inside of the parentheses. And now whatever's in the denominator goes into the numerator. And whatever's in the numerator is going to go into the denominator. So watch this. Okay, so notice I just moved the denominator to, to the numerator. And now I move the numerator to the, to the denominator. And that's all raised to the power of positive one half. Ah, remember, if you have a fractional, a negative exponent, I can flip what's inside of here, but now it becomes a positive. Okay? All right, let's uh, simplify this now. A to the negative 2, A to the 3. Okay, so don't we just subtract these right here? A to the negative, so A to the negative 2 minus 3. Isn't that A to the... Well, okay, like we'll we'll put it down next line, but isn't that uh, um, negative five? Or, oops, this should be negative three. <laughs> okay, okay, negative two minus three, negative two minus three, right? And then right here, we're gonna have a b. Check this out right here. We have one fifth minus. Check this out. Little tricky business going on here. Remember, we, we subtract the exponents right here. So it's one-fifth minus a negative four. Oh, dang. That will get some people right there, but not you. You're going to get this, all right? And that's all raised to the power of one-half. Okay, so notice what I'm doing right now. I'm just simplifying what's inside the parentheses. Now let's do some more simplifying. Negative two minus three is a to the negative five. All right? And then right here, this becomes b to the one fifth plus four. Okay, so we'll have to get a common denominator here, and basically that just means multiply this this right here, top and bottom, uh, by five, right? Because we want to we want them both to have a common denominator of five. So this would be twenty. Maybe like here, like I'll just show that here. So if this has a one right there, then I multiply this top and bottom by uh, five. Okay, so watch this. This now is still a to the negative 5. And this right here is b. Now watch this now. 20 plus 1. So it's 21 over 5. And that's still all raised to the 1 half. Okay, now before we deal with this 1 half, I think this is supposed to be a positive exponent, right? That's what the problem says, right, with positive exponents. So if we have a negative exponent, let's make it positive by putting it in the denominator. Okay, so I have my b to the 21 over 5 on top. And now this thing gets kicked to the, to the bottom here. And that's all raised to the 1 half. Whew! Last but not least, let's go ahead and raise everything to the one half and our rule says that we just multiply these these exponents here okay so the top becomes watch here 21 times 1 which is 21 and 5 times 2 is 10 so b to the power of 21 over 10 and then a to the and you can think of it as a 1 on the bottom of that 5 so 5 times 1 so we get 5 on top and then 1 times 2 so b to the 21 over 10 all over a to the 5 over 2.